So welcome to this short video on the infrahyoid muscles. So this is a group of four muscles that are essentially found between the superficial muscle group of the neck, which are the platysma and the sternocleidomastoid, and the deeper paravertebra muscles. So these group of muscles essentially are attaching to the hyoid bone and will be drawing the hyoid down. So with the hyoid, which you can see here, the bone here and the thyroid cartilage behind it, this works because there is a membrane that connects the hyoid to the thyroid, the thyrohyoid membrane, it works as a unit. So these group of four muscles will essentially be drawing the hyoid or the thyroid kind of down as a collective, particularly when the, th the hyoid has been elevated in things like swallowing and speech. Now before we start to, to do the individual ones, it's interesting to note that this group of muscles seem to be the compared to or homologues to in the thorax to your intercostals or in your abdomen the anterior abdominal muscles particularly the rectus abdominis so these are known as the strap muscles and they seem to be embryologically equivalent to those group of muscles in different body regions so let's have a look at each one individually starting laterally we can see this muscle here same one over here this is known as the Omohyoid muscle. So, omo essentially means shoulder in Greek, whereas the hyoid is like a U shape, that's the letter for U in Greek, and so that's why the hyoid is named the hyoid because of the shape of it. Now, this omohyoid muscle, as you can see over here on this one, because you can see it easier, is attached down at the scapular level, that's why it's called the shoulder. So, it's attached at the superior border of the scapula near the, the, the notch, the scapular notch, the superior notch there, and it attaches down like so. So what it's going to be essentially doing is drawing the hyoid in that direction. Now there is two bodies, to, two bellies to this muscle, there's the inferior belly and the superior belly. And so they will do slightly different things. There's this kind of intermediate tendon which appears to be connect, uh, con continuous with the cervical fascia, which seems to have some small effect to, uh, um, in the function of the cervical um, fascia, particularly with deep inspiration. But the muscle itself, the, at least the superior belly here, is probably much more vertical in its orientation. So it will draw the omohyoid, sorry, the, draw the, um, the hyoid bone straight down. So that's its primary action, is to draw the hyoid or depress the hyoid, um, particularly when it's been elevated, like we said, through speech or through swallowing. The innervation of this particular muscle, well, the superior belly seems to be solely innervated by C1, whereas the inferior seems to be C1 to C3. Okay, so that's the omohyoid muscle. Moving slightly medial to it, we've got this muscle here. We'll start on this one. So this muscle is attached down here at the manubrium. So this is the manubrium part of the sternum. Okay, so it's located just posterior or behind the sternoclavicular joint, which you can see here. So just behind it, this is where its attachment is, and it's going all the way up to the hyoid. So the origin insertion, origin insertion is going from the sternum to the hyoid, so it's called the sternohyoid muscle. Pretty straightforward. It's a very long slender muscle, and essentially it's going to do something similar to the omohyoid. It's going to, to draw the hyoid straight down, depress it, particularly when it's been elevated, as we saw before. Now, in terms of innovation, it's going to have the same innovation as this inferior belly, so it's going to get C1 to C3 for its innovation. Now, what the innovation for most of these muscles are going to be to the body of the hyoid. Now, moving deeper, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to do a cut through here and here of the sternohyoid, and reflect it back. So what we've done is reflect, reflect, and what we can see are two further muscles deeper to this one we've just done. So there's one that's here, which is a shorter muscle compared to the sternohyoid. This is the sternothyroid because it goes to the oblique line on the thyroid cartilage. And this one here, okay, it's going from the sternum to the thyroid. So we'll call it the sterno thyroid makes sense. So the sternothyroid will also 
as you'd probably guess, draw it straight down. However, one slight difference is if you can fix the high, if you can fix the hyoid bone, particularly with the muscles that are above it, the the suprahyoids. Remember, these are all infrahyoid. Infra meaning below, so they're located located below the hyoid. Any muscle that it's above it, they're going to be the suprahyoid, which are attached to the hyoid. So if you can fix the hyoid by these suprahyoids, so it's not moving, and you contract this muscle, so you can kind of stretch out the larynx. That will give you, in terms of vocalization, oh, oh, a deeper, a deeper sound. So you can extend it out slightly by this muscle with a fixed hyoid bone. Okay, innovation for this one also C1 to C3. Okay, so that's the sternothyroid. Moving on to the last one. So again, we've reflected the sternohyoid back. And at the superior portion, so you can see the reflection there, we've got this muscle in here. So this is going to originate just superior to that oblique line, which we saw at the, um, the insertion for the sternothyroid. So this one is going to go from the thyroid to the hyoid, and you can probably guess what you're going to call that. We call that the thyrohyoid muscle the thyrohyoid muscle. So it is going to go from the oblique line up to the body of the hyoid behind the sternohyoid, so deeper to it, also in the belly of the hyoid. Now this particular muscle will be innovated by C1, okay, particularly a branch, specifically a branch of the hypoglossal nerve. So it has a similar innovation to the junior hyoid, which we did up in the suprahyoids. Now, the only difference with this one, it will draw the hyoid down when the hyoid isn't fixed, okay? So it will pull it down like the rest of them. That's essentially what all the infrahyoids do. But on its own, if you have your hyoid fixed, it's actually going to pull up the thyroid. So it's going to do the opposite of what we saw here. So it will give you the, ah, the higher notes working at your larynx region. So there we have it, we've got the four muscles, we've got the omohyoid, we've got the sternohyoid, we've got the sternothyroid and the thyrohyoid muscles. They're all considered the strap muscles of the neck. As a collective, they will depress the hyoid, but as you can see, they do slightly different things when they're acting on, them, on their own.